Never in a million years did I think I would start a 75 hard challenge. Hey ladies, okay, today I'm sending you a bonus podcast, non-scripted, non-edited, actually most of mine are never edited, but um, podcast. I'm on a walk and Today, the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because a week ago, I decided to do a full-blown, not bending the rules, 75 hard challenge. And in the past, I've talked about doing a 75 hard challenge, but I called it 75 soft, and I made up my own rules. And I want to give a huge shout out to my um, client, Melissa Reynolds. I love you dearly. And just by you showing up as you inspired me. So if you are not familiar with the 75 hard challenge, Google it. It is put on by Andy Francilla. Um, It is a very masculine challenge. Um, The whole premise of it, and I will go over the rules right now, I just got to pull up my app, is for 75 days, so there's also different phases, so the first phase um, is just the 75 hard challenge. So you have 75 days of doing the following. You have a, you have two workouts, one is one of them has to be outdoors and they both have to be about 45 minutes each and you do not get to do them like you can't do an hour and a half of workout you need to do a workout for 45 minutes two times a day and one of them has to be outside so rain snow sleet tsunami it has to be outside um, you have to take a progress picture selfie mirror selfie who cares you have to read 10 pages of a book um, they, he suggests nonfiction so that it's like personal development, life enhancing. Um, you have to drink a gallon of water a day. Um, that's a lot of water and I'll talk about my whole process in general shortly. Um, a gallon of water a day, and then you have to follow some form of diet and you have to, You cannot eat cheat meals or alcohol. So the reason why I wanted to be public about this is I'm actually scared that I'm going to quote unquote fail. I have failed so many times before I've attempted, but I will tell you that I was never committed. Okay. So hear me when I say I was never committed. I was in it half ass. But I never made it to seven days when I tried to do the full-blown thing because not only was I scared, but I, I set myself up for failure. Like I already knew I was going to fail. I was hiding it. I didn't have public accountability. I wasn't doing it with any friends. I also didn't even plan for it. I didn't set my day. So the reason why I decided to start doing this a week ago was because my, um, one of my clients and friends, Melissa Reynolds, who decided she already has done a full blown 75 hard challenge. And I was astonished that she completed it. So the fact that she completed a challenge that is grueling as it is, but she also has a business and five children gave me a sense of belief that I can do this too. That there's no reason why I can't accomplish something. And so now she's on to the next phase of 75 hard, which is like you're doing the same thing again, but there's a few other um, tasks that are added. So I told her, I said, okay, I've been um, on the fence about this. I've been wanting to do it, but I haven't completely jumped in the water. I'm just dipping my toe in the water. So if I'm going to commit to this, I have to verbally commit it to her. I have to make space for it. And I could feel the fear. My fear was fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of disappointing people, fear of disappointing myself. 
And here's the thing, if you forget one of those items, you have to start all over again. So if you are on the 74th day and you somehow forget to take that damn selfie, you have to start all over again. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've learned about myself in the last seven days. But more than that, I really wanted to do this because I wanted to show how habits and discipline are really about what success is. But I do not believe in burnout. I am also not Andy Francilla. And I do not believe in hustle culture. Um, I do not believe that women operate the same as men. I think we have our own superpowers, but we haven't been able to tap into them because culturally we've just never been given the opportunity to. Um, Taught we're too sensitive, we're too emotional, um, you know, we get irritable at a certain time of month. And I'm using cycle syncing during this process. I'm also intuitively really, really digging into what does my body need. So on a day where I'm just not feeling it, I walk two times for 45 minutes at minimum. And sometimes it's back to back. Um, Sometimes it's one in the morning, one at night. And there's a lot more that I'm learning about myself that has nothing to do with working out or doing my water or eating. Another thing that I wanted to say is um, the food stuff. So for the last year and a half, I have been really digging into my personal relationship with food. I've hired um, somebody that I trust, that I personally connected with. So I highly suggest that if you you know, feel called that that's an area of your life that you're ready to dive into, then you find somebody's personality that you connect with. Um, The person that I found counts macros, macronutrients, which are protein, carbs, and fats. So if you're like, what are macros? I am not a macro coach. I have no desire to teach it. So just Google what are macros or how do you count macros? There's so many coaches out there that can help you calculate it. Um, But that's the food lifestyle that I'm currently on and it works great for me. But I also don't wanna be restrictive. So I don't drink alcohol. I haven't drank for five years now. Um, I gave up alcohol a long time ago when it was no longer serving me. Um, As a child, not a child, I wasn't drinking as a child. As a teenager, um, when I was drinking, it, it was a depressant for me and I, it really did, I did not metabolize alcohol well and I've never done well with it. My hangovers would last a week. I would become severely depressed off of like one glass of wine. It was just something that never served me and was also not my go-to. I didn't function well with it. So any addictive tendencies that I have definitely never veered towards um, alcohol. So I gave that up a long time ago. And so that's easy for me. Now, the cheat meals. I, I'm a huge fan of food freedom. And everyone has their own food journey. And I know that some people are nervous to do a 75 hard challenge because of the cheat meal. So my intention for the 75 hard challenge with the food is I am counting my macros, my macronutrients that my coach sets for me, and I can eat whatever the hell I want. If I want to eat a burger and french fries, I can eat that. If I want to eat chips, I can eat that. It just has to be portion controlled to fit within my macros. But here's the beautiful thing. Since I've been doing the food stuff for a year and a half, year and a little bit, Um, when I started, I wanted to binge on the things that I thought I was giving up my chips, um, candy. Uh, It was mainly chips. I love chips and I wanted to binge on it because my body lacked nutrients like my body. And I would say most women are under new, like have under 
what the fuck am I trying to say? They don't have enough nutrients in their body. We are taught to carb up. We're in a culture of yo-yo dieting. It's toxic. It's yucky. It's awful. It's gross. It leaves people deflated. It fucks up your hormones, your adrenals. You're eating off your kids' plates. You don't even remember the last time you ate. You're not eating because you think if you eat less, you're going to lose weight. It doesn't work like that. My body was used to be in survival mode. And that was a huge thing. Post cancer, eight years ago, I was on this nutrition journey. But when COVID hit, I went straight to my comfort foods and um, wasn't loving it. Felt like shit. And I am wildly sensitive and affected by my food. So the reason why I am saying that is because I want you to understand that I am not restricting my food in any capacity. If anything, macros makes me eat more food and I stabilize my weight. So I am not trying to lose weight at this moment. I am just maintaining the weight that I have and I'm trying to gain muscle, just muscle gains, gym gains. So If you told me two years ago that I would be walking down my street in the middle of the day, having this conversation with you, I would have told you, you are fucking nuts. I was not that type of person. And here's my point of sharing this with you. Your identity is attached to your habits. Your identity is attached to your habits. When women introduce themselves as I am a mom, I, I'm a this, I'm a that, I work from home, I stay at home, I'm a wife, I'm a partner, I'm this, I'm that. You are introducing your identity. What do you identify as? So people always ask me at the beginning of an interview, Heather, introduce yourself, what do you do? And I'm like, I am so far removed from my labels and titles that I say, I am a soul in a body, having a human experience. I am so far removed from who I used to think I was. I'm like, I'm just riding this roller coaster called life every day, pivoting, pivoting. It's like surfing. I'm just riding the wave. And then the freaking thunderstorm comes. And now I'm like ducking for shelter. And sometimes we just got to ride the wave and sometimes we get crashed and spit out and then sometimes the sun comes out. And that is legit what life is. So the reason why I decided to commit to the 75 hard challenge, which I call 75 emotionally uncomfortable challenge, is because one, I wanted to scare the crap out of myself because I truly enjoy challenging myself. Two, I wanted to be a role model for women everywhere that it doesn't matter if you just had a baby, you just adopted a child, you are a stay-at-home mom, you are a work-at-home mom, you are, I don't know, a woman in society, your children maybe are grown and out of your house, you can change change is constantly happening. So I also wanted to put a feminine twist on a masculine concept. And it's so unique. But what I often find is that we're so conditioned that with perfectionism that if I don't do it his way, if I don't do it their way, I have failed. I have failed. So I'm going to dabble and sprinkle in a few of these extra bonus kind of micro habit um, podcasts in the next, well, 75 days, hopefully. Scares the crap out of me because my goal is, or my thought is, what if I fail, right? What if I fail? And there's a few times where I'm like, what if? And I'm like, you can't think like that. You can't think like that. And I also just want to put it out there that I believe that if I didn't run towards a huge area of my life that was burdening me last year, which was my physical body and my nutrition, I mean, I cleaned up so much post, 
like in the last eight years of my life, so much. Our finances, our my business, my marriage, my parenting. Um, you know, I've been on the personal development journey for a long time. And that was one bucket of my life where I was not satisfied. And I did something about it. I didn't wait. I didn't use the excuse that, oh, it's 2020. I, you know, can't do anything about it. I ran towards it. And I also want you to know, I never fucking do this shit alone. I hire help. You cannot, unless you have a plan and you're acting on that plan, you cannot do this stuff alone. You have to get help. You have to seek help. And I personally have actually tried to implement food and movement into my life strategically in the last eight years. And I have learned so much. And finally, finally, in 2020, when I hired somebody that scared the crap out of me, and I pushed through some crazy upper limits, just by just by being consistent, just by not giving up, just by, you know, working with somebody who was strong, strong willed, but also somebody who was a champion herself. I didn't agree with everything she said, but I really learned how to trust myself. And I also already trusted myself while working with her. So my point is, wherever you are on your journey, don't think, oh, Heather did it. I need to do this now. If it feels good to you, jump in. If it doesn't, don't worry. But my goal is for you to see and understand behind the scenes that every woman that you look up to, every influencer, every mentor, every coach, every human that you come into contact with that you're like, I wish, I wish. I want you to know that behind the scenes, they have thoughts, they have worries, they have fears. So this is my first entry, which is definitely longer than expected. Um, So now I'll give you some kind of like reflections on the first seven days um, of 75 hard. But before I do, I would love to know if you've ever considered doing 75 hard Uh, If you know what it is, I want to hear from you. Text me or send me a message on Instagram. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Heather Chauvin. My last name is spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N underscore. So Heather Chauvin um, on Instagram or text me 313-710-5199. It's an American phone number. I only use it for... um, for text message. It's an app I use for my community. So 313-710-5199. All right. So some of the mindset shifts that I've had. First, day one, I was terrified. I was like, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. And then I kept thinking about that thought, right? The story that I'm telling myself of like this fear, feeling my physical fear in my body and being like, but you didn't fail yet. Like, you didn't fail yet. You're about to do something big. If you didn't fail yet, why do you keep telling yourself you're going to fail? So I just asked, I shifted my attention and said, great, if you weren't going to fail, how would you set yourself up for success today? Just day one. So I blocked out my calendar and I put workout number one, workout number two. And mentally, before I even got started, I made a commitment to myself, not to put too much pressure on myself, that I can put a little pressure to get things done, but I won't put the pressure on myself of like verbally abusing myself. Like you suck, you didn't get it done, right? Like that inner, inner critic, the inner shame. So, so I made the inner commitment that at bare minimum, I would walk two times a day for 45 minutes. Like that would be my workouts because I was really nervous about the workouts because I always have a lot of resistance about working out. And I'm also at a point in my life where I do have a coach, a fitness person who holds me accountable to working out three times a week, um, three to four times a week. So 
that was easy for me, but it was a little challenge because some days I do find myself, um, what I would call negotiating or breaking promises to myself. Oh, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow. So I did have a little fear of like facing it head on. Um, so I knew that if I'm not going to go to the gym and I'm going to break that promise to myself, at least I wouldn't break the promise of going for a walk. And I also knew that a lot of my resistance around working out or moving two times a day was not actually about the movement. It was about creating that space for myself because regardless of contrary to popular belief, I, have, I still have a lot of guilt around being away from my kids. Even when they're at school, I feel guilty. It's just my thing. Um, I just try not to let it run my life. So if I'm going for a walk and my kids are home, I invite them. Sometimes I'm like, hey, let's go for a walk or go for a bike ride. That counts, right? So they can come with me and you can include them. It actually keeps me more active than typical. It gives me a reason and a structure to, to stay moving. The water is not really a big issue for me. Um, I've been drinking a lot of water consistently. Um, I do fall off once in a while if I don't, if I'm not held accountable, but that's not an issue for me. The issue for me is, was reading 10 pages a day and also um, not binging on chips or snacks. So the only reason why I binge on chips or snacks is I, I identify or I, yeah, I guess I would identify as a rebel. So when things feel too restrictive or too disciplined, I want to reward myself with food. And what I've noticed over the years is I reward myself with food so that I can feel like shit. Because what I'm actually doing is saying to myself, you feel too good. Now you need to sabotage it and feel like shit. And so what I've noticed with working with my food in the last year and a half, where I've eaten a lot of chips in the last year and a half, even counting macros, um, my coach will probably tell you this because I used to lie to her about it all the time. But anyways, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole, but I will definitely share all of that publicly with you. I have no shame around it. But my point is now I, I have the awareness to go, why are you eating this? And if you're eating the chips, enjoy the fucking chips. Like lick every, all the juiciness off of that chip. Like let it crunch in your mouth. I'm describing them now. I'm salivating. I need to stop talking about chips. Anyways, my point is it's okay. I'm not restricting anything. I'm giving myself life. And that took time. So again, it's not about no cheating. It's just about not hiding. So if I... If I decide to eat a whole bag of chips, that whole bag of chips is going on my macros and my coach is going to say, what happened? And I get to talk about it. No more hiding. Hiding is all about shame. But so far in the first week, that hasn't been an issue. Um, I also don't restrict like, oh, I can't eat this. I can't eat that. Eat the ice cream. Eat the cake. You just don't need to eat the whole cake or a whole pint of ice cream. But Again, what I really noticed was that I'm now in a state where my body gets the nutrients that it needs, so it's not starving anymore. And so I see a lot of diet culture very restrictive. So some of that belief is just old, old beliefs coming out that um, I get to choose, right? In that moment, am I going to... Am I going to have a different snack? Am I going to walk away? Am I going to drink some water? What am I going to do? Also drinking a gallon of water. um, Dang. Like, one, you're peeing all the time. And two, um, I find it decreases your appetite a lot. The last thing I want to talk about is the 10 pages of reading. So this is another stretch for me. Again, an author who says she has a hard time reading. I talked about this publicly before, but I have, um, growing up, I had some severe un- undiagnosed learning disabilities. And so now I use humor to mask them, but I could barely read and write. And so my editor um, at the publishing house and a lot of my coaches and my friends, they laugh at me and they'll be like, 
oh, we call them Heatherisms, where Heather just makes up a word, and I just like put two words together. Um, and the funny thing is, I think a lot of my humor actually came as a coping strategy uh, for the shame and embarrassment that I had as a child of not being good in school or not feeling like I was good in school. I mean, education has come a long way and um, at the same time hasn't. But my point of that is, you can one, you could be wildly successful and have learning disabilities. And two, <clears throat> I developed a complex and a belief that I couldn't read. So I avoid reading. And so I had so much support and help when I was writing my book for that reason, because my resistance was so, so, so intense around my reading. And so now when I'm reading a book, 10 pages is actually not a lot. But what I find is if I'm having a lot of resistance and I'm like, oh, I don't want to read, I don't want to read, I'll read two pages, put it down, go do something else, come back, read two pages, put it down, go do something else. And I'm 75% of the way through a book. And I've had this book for a really long time. And I just, I barely complete books. Like who does? I, unless you're like an avid reader, um, on average, most people won't finish a book. But there's something satisfying about the completion of finishing a book. And in my whole life, reading a book, I probably count on one hand how many books I've read from front to back. I'm a verbal processor. I'm a visual learner. So I will listen to audiobooks all day. I'll listen to podcasts. I'll listen to lectures. I'll take notes. Um, Physically reading just was never my thing. So I have a lot of resistance around the 10 pages. So what I've decided to do is just to split it up. And I also try to get morning wins. So if I can take a picture of myself in the morning, I feel like, boom, done, awesome, move on. If I can also read five pages in the morning and then tell myself, okay, just two more pages, then you can read the rest before you go to bed. And then I'm like, okay, just one more page. And I get that done almost before the kids are awake or while they're eating breakfast or like I'm just literally reading the pages in between maybe this is a side of like pandemic or something in between getting the kids ready for school in the morning and before I jump on social media I try to get those 10 pages done if they're not done I try to read them before bed um and yeah, it, I've noticed resistance around it, but most of the time the resistance is there. And then once I start, it goes away. So I want to hear from you. Have you ever done any habit challenges? And I'm going to dive more as the days continue about what I'm identifying, like noticing about myself when it comes to leadership, other big courageous action that I'm deciding to take in my personal and professional life because I'm challenging myself in this way. I find when we give ourselves habit challenges, we build our courage muscles and we build our trust muscles. And when we build our trust muscles, then we begin to trust ourselves in other areas of our lives. And speaking of trust, before I wrap up today, I want to let you know that we have a mastery Q&A live kind of panel slash coaching um, conversation that we are going to be having on um, the back end of my podcast, meaning this is going to be live. Eventually, we'll share it on the podcast, but we want to see you there. If you are a woman in business, if you want to make a big impact in the world, in your business, or heck, you want to change those generational patterns in your business and make more money, then head on over to Heather Chauvin dot com forward slash impact heather chauvin dot com forward slash impact and when you go to um that it's going to be on october 13 13th at 2 p.m eastern and we're going to do it live so you're going to be listening to a few ladies talk on a panel and behind the scenes you can ask questions as well so If you are a business owner and you are ready to make a bigger impact in the world, head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash impact. Come join me for the live conversation with women in business. We're going to hype you up and also give you practical behind the scenes strategy of what it really looks like to grow a thriving business.